I'm here with Druzy. We're inside the Upton Stadium. Manchester United 4, Leeds United 0. Greenwood gets his first goal. We see Rashford score, Martial score. Even Philip Jones. Was it easy, Drew? It was easy. They didn't have a shot on target all day, I don't think. We were clinical with our chances. It was so good to see Greenwood get on the score sheet as well. That's exactly what we need him doing next season. So, yeah, I wanted more chances to be created, but you can't complain with the 4-0 win. I'm buzzing. Aaron Wambasaka with that early assist as well for Greenwood. After some great link-up play with Paul Pogba, we saw Tahith Chung and Angel Gomez making a penalty for Martial. There's lots of positives to take today, weren't it? That Wambasaka to uh, Greenwood partnership, we'll see that for years to come. So that's very promising signs for next year, this season and the seasons to come. I'm buzzing. Um, who was your standout player today for Manchester United? My standout player, oh, probably Rashford. I feel like Rashford, he made the runs that we needed to create to make the space. I think Greenwood as well, he was really impressive. But yeah, man of the match was Rashford for me. Marcus Rashford, he also got the official man of the match as well. I asked this question a lot to others during the week. Um, do you think Rashford Martial can handle the, the number nine position for Manchester United? Because Lukaku today, he was here, he wasn't involved. I, I prefer Rashford at the moment as a winger, but I think as his career progresses, as he matures, he'll be better off in a number nine role, getting behind the strikers. But I'm not sure, I still think we need a good top quality signing for a striker at the moment. Six goals, two clean sheets in two games. It's easy to get overconfident or carried away. It is only pre-season, um, but have you seen anything that makes you more confident for the coming season? I think we're going to win the league. We're going to win the <laughs> FA Cup and the Europa League. We're not in the Champions League. <laughs> no, but um, as you said, it's only pre-season. Um, I haven't seen... It's, yeah, it's pre-season. Too early to tell at the moment, I think. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, Drew. And listen... How the hell corrupt FM all the way here in Australia? Shout out Drewsy on YouTube. <laughs> Cheers, man. So I'm here with Mitch and Jake. Manchester United have beaten Leeds United 4-0 at the Optus Stadium. United's last game in Australia. Um, what have you made of it? Um, yeah, very positive. Um, obviously, probably the results we expected with the opposition. But um, good to see the young guys, Gomez, Sean, Green will come in. They were seamless. Um, the older guy stood up, Pogba. It was good to see him show up. Um, oh, he's 50-50 whether he's going in. So it was good to see that. Um, and they were entertaining. I mean, that's all we can ask. We don't get to see them often. So entertainment, goals and wins. 4-0 against Leeds. Easy, isn't it? Unbelievable. <laughs> it's the first time I've seen United play and I've been a fan of them for over 10 years, man. It's like, it's, it's so just surreal. Um, and I think the most, the thing that I'm happiest about is just getting to see the team play, getting to see Martial, getting to see Pogba, Rashford, all these guys that we watch every single week. Like, you know, you guys in the UK, you guys are, you're going to the games and it's great, but we're up, stay, we're staying up till 3, 4 a.m. in the morning watching them. So we're still huge fans, but even though we can't be there to watch, we can't be there. I suppose that is something that, yeah. Maybe guys like myself take for granted when yeah. United are losing and drawing every week and it's frustrating going to the games and you're like, ah. Oh. But then there's people around the world that would give a left arm to be going to every single game. Yeah, man. It's, it's just, I don't even know how to comprehend it. It's just so amazing that I've, you know, I'm able to see the team that I've, I've loved for that many years just play in front of my eyes. You know, like at the end of the game, Ashley Young, you know, and, and Martial, they, they threw their shirts out into the crowd and I thought that was, you know, I, I wish I could have been down there to try and grab it, to be honest. But it's like, you know, they're here, man, like breathing the same air. It's just, it's so amazing. I would, I never would have thought they'd ever come to Perth. We're so isolated from the rest of the world and the fact that they're here, it's just awesome. Like, I, there's no other way to say it. Have you learned anything about this Ali Gunnar Solskjaer United team in the last two games? Um, Probably not too much. I think, especially being at the game, it's a bit harder to look back and see it from a broader perspective. Um, I guess I, I was a little worried after we appointed him permanently, the drop-off. Um, so again, good to see that maybe we're coming back to that flowing football that we played when we first got him as interim manager. Um, but I think it'll need to be a bigger body of work before we can really judge how much impact Oli's had. The signings, um, superb. Daniel James and Juan Basaka couldn't fault them. Probably my two highlights, just being able to see what they can, prov can provide. Daniel James looks like a nightmare. Reminds me a bit of uh, Tony Martial when he first signed. Every time he gets the ball, whether it's good, bad or indifferent, it's something. And it just creates laneways, little passages for everyone else. So probably good to see them. A couple of ticks for the signings. 
Harry Maguire, that'd be another tick, I think. And then hopefully we can bring him maybe one or two and get a real good body of work going into next season. I think. What would your target be for next season? When you see the squad we have and maybe Maguire and another potential signing, what would you set the objective at? Um, got to be, got to be top four. Let's not be silly and say, let's win the league. And yeah, that'd be awesome. But I want to play Wednesday nights, especially as he said, wake up at four in the morning. It's easier to do that Tuesday and Wednesday here than Thursday and Friday. Yeah. So um, let's get Champions League football back at Old Trafford, get those big European nights um, and build from there. Let's not try and shoot for the stars and put too much pressure on the squad and Ollie. Because if we're saying, oh, top two and we don't really have the squad for that, it's just unfair pressure. Um, let's say top four, settle for that um, and build from there. It's a long-term project, as Ollie said, continuously. It's not here and now. We've got to be ready to build for the next few years. You agree with him? Absolutely. You know, Is that I, your objective? Yeah, I, get, I, I definitely want to make the top four. But at the, at the end of the day, it's like you say, oh, we don't want to be ridiculous and say we can't win the league. Leicester did it. <laughs> you, know what they, you know what I mean? They, Leicester did it. Why can't we? All we I, I think we, we, it's more than one or two signings. We need to just change the way that we play back in the days when, you know, we had Skulls gigs and all those guys. In the, don't remind me. Please. Don't, I know it's hard. It's, it's, it's hard. It's the glory days. But... What do you do, man? What do you do? You have to, you have to win, lose or draw, man. Win, lose or draw. We, yeah, we have to get back to it. Absolutely. Thank you very much. No